Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys we are going to be analyzing the company Digital Realty and man this company nobody really recommended it but what they have been doing recently or at least what the stock price has been doing recently it is just completely bonkers. I'm going to show you guys pretty much everything like the stock price and all the stuff that's currently been happening and yeah it's gonna be a wild ride and hopefully you guys might consider this a good buying opportunity for this company with the current market collapse that has been recently happening so with that said let's actually analyze digital realty and see if maybe in accordance to their fundamentals this is a pretty good buy right now so with that said let's get started with this analysis all right guys before we actually get on to any numbers i'm going to show everybody the one year graph and the year to date graphs you can see right here on the one year guys they're down 31.34 percent and on the year to date guys 43.35 percent guys take a look at this 52 week range 96 dollars and eight cents at the lowest as you can see by that dot right there we are actually on the 52 week low range current share price as of post market on friday guys it was down 0.35 percent or around 35 cents guys 98 dollars and 83 cents so this actually might be a pretty good buying opportunity now before i go any further for all those of you who guys who may not know what this company does here's a quick overview digital realty support the world's leading enterprise and service providers to deliver a full spectrum of data center co-location and interconnection solutions basically guys they're a REIT company for data storage which is something that i think will continue to evolve into the into the future especially with things becoming more and more integrated in the cyberspace kind of realm so again this actually might serve as a really good buying opportunity now looking at the dividend summary guys most REITs pay out a dividend because of the fact that they are forced to pay out minimum 90 percent of their taxable income in the form of a dividend and this actually serves to be guys a massive massive yield usually and digital realty is no stranger to this current yield guys of 4.92 percent almost five percent absolutely massive and this isn't even a small amount per share either a dollar and 22 cents per share annual payout of four dollars and 88 cents payout ratio of 104.39 percent which is actually fairly good because again minimum 90 percent the five-year CAGR on this dividend is 5.6 percent and they have grown this dividend for 16 consecutive years so it's not like they have just instituted this dividend and they don't really have a track record of continuously increasing 16 consecutive year guys is actually very very notable not a dividend aristocrat but they're really getting there ex-dividend date pass as of september 14th payout date was actually on the 30th so if you guys saw my dividend video then you probably saw the digital realty dividend in that video from the investments that i have made and of course they pay their dividends quarterly so let's come into the calculator guys we got the ticker symbol of dlr market cap of 28.5 billion dollars current share price of 99 dollars and 18 cents of course this is not taking post market current ffo of 1.8 billion dollars and as of last year's affo it is 1.8 billion dollars annual dividends of four dollars and 88 cents this means that based off of the shares outstanding guys they pay out around 1.4 billion dollars meaning that as of their payout ratios in regards to their ffo and affo this is 76.62 percent as well as 75.38 percent respectively not too shabby it's actually looking fairly fairly decent analyzing some fundamentals starting of course with the net income guys we got five years ago of 248.3 million dollars to today of look at this 1.3 billion dollars absolutely bonkers right there there is an increase of 439 percent on the five year and as you can see they had a massive massive spike from two years ago to one year ago two years ago they did go down but guys that's perfectly explainable and then as of one year ago the massive demand for just storage and data storage was just non-stop right so that kind of explains as to why they did 1.71 billion dollars and i don't think that this will continue to drop guys i think that because of the demand of just data storage in general i think this kind of industry and business will continue to thrive now i don't necessarily like this massive jump from three years ago to one year ago so i'm gonna put it a little bit lower than normal but still fairly respectable at like around like a 75 percent coming now into the ffo the funds from 
operations. Guys, this is essentially the company's cash flow, right? This is essentially the company's cash flow, not adjusting for capital expenditures. And we got five years ago of $1 billion to today of $1.8 billion. That is an increase, guys, of 79% with an average of $1.5 billion in FFO. Now, we do see, once again, a very consistent increase from five to three years ago. And two years ago, they did go down, but it wasn't a lot. And then from two years ago to one year ago, they did go up a really big amount, right? Going from 1.4 billion to 1.8 billion. Now, the fact of the matter is that this graph kind of mirrors the net income. However, the jump from three years ago of $579.8 million to one year ago of $1.7 billion in the net income is a lot more than this $1.45 billion to $1.84 billion. So I'm actually going to give this a much higher grade overall just for that reason. Very nice consistent one, guys. I'm going to give this like a 90%. Now, when it comes to the AFFO, this is essentially the FFO, but now it takes into account the capital expenditures. And usually the trailing 12 months isn't really known. It usually tends to follow though the FFO fairly, fairly closely. So we'll probably get this once this year's over for them. But as it currently stands, this is looking like a really, really nice consistent growth. Of course, the dip two years ago and then the spike one year ago. But overall, guys, not too bad. This was a change of 82% with an average of $1.4 billion. Overall, I'm actually going to give this roughly the same grade as the FFO at 90%. Looking at the assets minus the liabilities, taking the company's assets, subtract the liabilities, and we get to see if the company is able to survive a downturn. And obviously we want this number to be positive, their assets to be higher than their liabilities, because if it's not, then that's a problem. And of course, I like the consistency of it going up. Now, currently guys, as of today, there are $17.7 .7 billion. As of one year ago, they were actually higher at $18.5 billion, but again, this year isn't over yet. And well, we do get to see that right when COVID hit two years ago, they had a massive, massive spike going from three years ago of $10.6 billion to then $18.5 billion. Absolutely massive. Average total assets is around $29.4 billion. Average liabilities is $14.6 billion. And doing this difference, we get around $15 billion, guys. I'm going to give this essentially like an 80%, mainly because, you know, it is increasing and I like that. But we do see a massive jump right here from three to two years ago. I don't necessarily like that, but I understand as to why it occurred. I'm going to give it an 80%. Now, when it comes to shares outstanding, when it comes to REITs, well, I recently found this out that REITs usually tend to issue a lot of shares because of the fact that they have to give out majority of their income in the form of the dividend. So, all of this plays with like the regulations that they have to follow. So the fact that you see guys are re-increasing their shares outstanding isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now, at what rate do you want them to be increasing this kind of shares outstanding? Well, it just depends up to you. If they are increasing it a lot more than the value that they're giving you back, then that's obviously a bad thing. I would normally compare that to guys, the FFO and the AFFO. Basically, if the FFO and the AFFO are the change on the five year is lower than the shares outstanding, then you're probably losing out. But as it currently stands, guys, they've only increased the shares outstanding by like 39%. It's not too bad in my personal opinion. Five years ago of 205.5 million shares to today of 284.7 million shares. I'm going to give this guys essentially like a 90%. And now when it comes to their total debt, I'm actually going to change this. I am no longer going to put this a grade. However, I like to put it on just so that way we can see how much they've increased it by. And as you can see, within the past five years, five years ago, they had $8.65 billion in total debt. As of today, it's 15.7 billion. That's only an increase of 82%. Now, 82% is pretty big, but that's within the past five years, guys. And of course, the fact that COVID hit, you can really see the spike right here. And you can see from four years ago to three years ago, they actually brought it down a little bit. So for all we know, this may actually be taken under control fairly, fairly soon. So looking at an overview, when it comes to this company, we got the net income, we gave it a 75%. FFO, we gave it a 90%. AFFO, pretty much the same, a 90%. Assets minus liabilities, 80%. And the shares outstanding at 90%. For an overall grade, guys, of 86%. Yeah, this company isn't too shabby. Now, just because the fundamentals are good doesn't necessarily mean that at the current share price, even though they are at the 52-week low, that we buy it. Let's actually use now net asset value, P divided by FFO, and P 
divided by AFFL to see what we can actually find out when it comes to this company's value. And doing so guys, we can see that at the current share price of $99.18, a net asset value, which is essentially taking the assets minus the liabilities and then dividing that by the current shares outstanding, we get a target share price of $62.07. So unfortunately, based off of the net asset value, it's telling me that it is still overpriced. However, guys, take a look at this. The current price divided by the current FFO the ratio is 15.72. And if we compare that to the five-year average FFO and divide the price divided by the average FFO, guys, this is a ratio of 19.28, meaning that we're actually at a lower ratio today than the five-year average. That's a really, really good sign that this is a good buy point. And now doing the same math for the AFFO, this actually gets even better. Now the price divided by AFFO, the current one, it is 15.47. So it's actually lower than the current price divided by FFO, right? Which is actually kind of surprising. Now, if we take the average AFFO and we do the price divided by the average AFFO, this actually becomes 20.19 average than the five year average price divided by the FFO. So it's pretty much just telling me that out of these three kind of valuations, the NASA value, okay, it's telling me that it is overpriced, but two of the three is telling me that it is at a pretty good value today. So based off of that, this actually might not be a pretty bad value right now at $99.18. And I personally think that too. I would actually love to buy this company right now. And in fact, I have bought this company a little bit. I used around $500 to buy a little bit into it because of the fact that it has fallen so much. So as you can clearly see, this is looking pretty good. Now, these types of companies, REITs, don't really use any assumptions to make these kinds of valuations. Guys, I still suggest you have this calculator. It's available for free, as well as, of course, my discounted free cash flow and my book value ratio and of course a dividend tracking sheet for companies like these that help you track dividends in fact you can even look at it right here i have digital realty dlr you can see they're paying me 26 dollars 58 every single quarter which is not too shabby so please i encourage everybody to do their own research to of course look into what this company is doing read their 10ks read their earnings report look at their fundamentals for yourselves and come up with your own assessment maybe your grades may be different maybe your grades may be higher or lower whatever it may be it's not financial advice every investment is the present value of all future cash flow so please have these calculators they're available for free all i'm asking for in return is just like subscribe comment it really does help you with the algorithm on youtube guys thank you for everybody who have subscribed it really does motivate me to keep going everybody who likes everybody who comments i really really do appreciate it and that's really all i'm asking for again the best way that you can support the channel guys is just like subscribe comment it really does help and of course tell your friends and family that may want to learn how to invest especially in this kind of market because it is a really good time to invest now guys now let's actually take a look at this dividend because well guys this is a company that i personally love for its dividend and uh if you guys are looking at the numbers right now it's looking good if you have five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars if you were to put it guys into this company at the current share price which is looking like it is a really good value this will get you 57.73 shares and at the current annual dividends per share of four dollars and 88 cents guys this would net you $281.70 in annual dividends. Absolutely insane. Quarterly dividends of $70.43 and a monthly dividend of $23.48. That's looking really, really good, guys. Anything above $200 for $5,725 is looking amazing. Now I'm curious, if I were to put this thing at $2,000, let's say you can only put in $2,000. Guys, look at this. This would net you almost $100 in annual dividends. That is amazing. So the fact of the matter is that it's telling me that at the current share price, it's a good buy. And the fact that the dividends are also really, really good at this current share price. Guys, this is looking like a banger of a company overall. So all in all, a DLR, I love this company. I have this company. I will love to buy more of this company. And that's really much it. Their fundamentals are amazing. They do have a couple spikes here and there. But aside from that, guys, I think this is going to be a banger of a company in the future. And if you were to buy right now, you'll be making out like a bandit, assuming, of course, that it matches what you guys believe they will do in the future. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And I will see you all in the next stock analysis of video.